So after five days of the Roslyn Park HSBC's National School Sevens, it does come down to this, the final of the cup match between Harrow School and Cranley. Cranley in the blue and white stripes and Harrow in the all blue. And welcome back with BBC London's Jamie Hill. Jamie, thank you for joining us for this final, the set piece event of this magnificent tournament. It's been a long week. It's been a long two days for both these sides. They started their matches at around about 10.20 yesterday morning. Numerous games for each side and <laughs> the legs must be feeling it. Their heads must be a bit tired, but they must be stirred by the fact they're in this final. Oh gosh, this is an absolute final to save it, Jack, I think, because um, Harrow looked very impressive in beating Kirkham in the semi-final over on that pitch too. They, they played extremely well, turned a 12-0 half-time lead around and ran out convincing winners in the end and were very impressive against a very good Kirkham side. And um, while Cranley were just immense in their semi-final over here on the main pitch, it was they unbelievable, just wasn't it? Against Millfield. Off, absolutely, they were picking off the Millfield restarts at will and that was one of the most impressive first halves of sevens rugby you'll see at schools level for a very long time i must say it stirred my uh, stirred my heart i'm an ex cranley pupil so you'll be in charge of making sure i'm neutral in this final jamie yeah, absolutely. They've been very impressive this afternoon as well because you see the way that they've gone through the group stages. But even so today, Cranley winning 30-0 in that semi-final, beating Queen Ethelberger's 31-10, then Wellington 22-15 in a cracking match um, in the first round of the elimination part of this tournament. But um, I think this is very, very evenly matched. Harrow, for their part, came in with a stunning comeback during their second stage pool game phase. They were 17 points to nil down against Hartbury. They came back to win that match 24-17. The cup final then kicked off. Harrow taking the ball from the kickoff. You'd expect it's a cup final. You expect it might be a cagey beginning. We've got a cup finals are, aren't they, Jack? With uh, defences very much on top, but my goodness me, that's a good surge by Sean Raffle there. And um, Harrow on the front foot immediately here. Harrow have been told to look out for the man in the yellow scrum hat for Harrow. Harrow, he's their danger man, and he sets off this lad up the middle, up the outside, he cuts in, and he's going to outpace the covering Cranley defence. Number seven, Callum Serka, scores the first try in the final. Harrow off to a fly. Well, that was textbook sevens rugby there, wasn't it, Jack? Because they worked it to this near side as we looked at it and tried to get that drift defence coming across, and when it came out to Callum Serka, my goodness me, very, very impressive speed down the touchline there, and an excellent step, too, to get in from the touchline. They, they set it up well with Raffle on this near side, and when it came back out to Circa, pace to burn down that touchline. We said watch out for the man in the yellow scrum hat, but in that time, he was just a decoy. If we have a look at it again, Circa pinned his ears back, and for Cranley's part, it was Robin Masters chasing back. He didn't stand a chance against that sort of pace. Now, Cranley had the chance to strike back. Ben Saki, this is the captain, charging forward in the number 12 shirt. Masters on the floor. Harrow all over Cranley. Ben Nicole, Cranley's game breaker, taken by the legs. Now they do get a bit of momentum on the forward foot. So important not to slip behind in sevens. Particularly in a cup final, you go two scores down and it's not game over, but. It's incredibly hard to come back from that position. Harrow doing a great job to hold this ball up. Yeah, that was great, great defence there by Harrow because um, you could see there that Cranley wanted to set up the, the rolling ball and get something going. They, they felt they weren't getting any joy out wide. They wanted to suck that Harrow defence in, but um, great body positions there from Harrow to, to make sure that ball didn't go to ground and get the recycled ball away there. So if you're just joining us in this showpiece final with two minutes in, Harrow off to a fly with a try under the posts. They're doing this all without their talisman, Jacob Ford, the third Ford brother. He's a Harrow schoolboy and he played yesterday in the group stage game. Twisting an ankle though, so unfortunately hasn't been able to play today. It hasn't really affected Harrow too much so far. Harrow's number eight, finding the pass to the number seven, almost. Let off for Cranley.
Cranley trying their best to fashion something on the far hand side. Cranley getting their hands on the ball, getting the chance to feel what it's like to be in a final, to relax into it, to remember that it's just any other game. Could burst up the middle here. Number 20 skipping out of a couple of tackles. That was Richard Emi. Then Nicole, long pass to Masters. Good period of possession, this by Cranley. Patient, patient build up. Men over here for Cranley if they can use it. Nicole sets off and goes himself. Superb man and ball tackle, though, by Harrow. Nicole looked to get the pass away, but couldn't manage it. Good rucking there by Cranley. That was very impressive. Driving forward now. And it opens up for the captain. On to Masters, on to Ben Nicole. He just has to run this one in, though. Diving over, making certain of the try. Didn't go in under the posts. Terrific work, though, to get themselves on the score sheet there because I felt at one, one moment they'd actually uh, missed their opportunity. They had a two-man overlap when um, they chose to take the tackle back inside instead and there would have been a run-in in the corner. But well worked, worked, bit, worked it back inside and um, Harrow finally committing numbers because for a long period there, Cranley were really struggling because Harrow didn't commit too many men to the breakdown and um, eventually that patience told and eventually Harrow had to commit the men there. Great try. Robin Masters there, just glancing that one to the right, so the scores stay at 5-all. Cranley on the score sheet, they'll be mightily relieved of that. I'm mightily relieved of that, I must say, um, as a former Cranley pupil. I thought at one stage, as I was saying there, I thought the chance had gone because they had a two-man overlap, but um, you can just see the experience at this level as well. They played plenty of sevens matches and they didn't panic, they didn't um, decide to, to resort to desperate measures when the ball came back inside and eventually that's a mistake though. It's not gone the 10 from the restart there and um, that is really the first mistake of what's been a very high quality final so far. Indeed, and it's a mistake we've actually seen over the first five days, well, all five days, so often. After a try particularly, well, you only get the chance to kick off after a try in sevens, of course. And there, uh, it seems like it's, errors are a little bit catching at the moment. You just begin to think that both sides realise now this is the big one, don't you? And um, they realise what's at stake in this game. And um, they've settled into this contest really, really well now. But at five points apiece, they know that the next mistake could be costly. And when you play mistake-free rugby like that, sometimes you actually lead to more errors rather than less. Nicole to throw in. Masters goes up for it, but tapped out of his hand and tapped forward. So, Cranley scrum. Cranley not used to this sort of territory in the latter stages of the Roslyn Park School Sevens. Last year, though, they did win the plate competition of the festival. That festival is now known as the Vars. This cup, formerly known as the Open. Cup and Vars situation to reflect the fact that if you win the cup, you are the best school in the country. And Ben Nicole desperately wants that to be Cranley. Flick out the back as well. Unbelievable moment of skill from Ben Nicole setting off Cranley for their second try. How about that from Ben Nicole? Eh? That is absolutely outstanding from Ben Nicole. Absolutely outstanding. It's not just the pace there, but it's the awareness and then the skill set as well. Because to do that, you know, in the group stages or in an earlier round in this competition is one thing, Jack. But to do that in the final, the tacklers coming in round the back, out the back door, just sensational play. Conversion as well, and ensuring that that flick pass went backwards. When you're moving at speed, often it's those ones that just drift forward, but he made sure. But it's the sort of thing, I think, Jack, that you know that you have to practice time and time and time again. You just sense there with Ben Nicole, that was an automatic process for him. He knew immediately he had the skill set. He knew exactly what he was going to do with a pass. And the only thing to say about that try is that we've been calling uh, Mr. Nicole, Ben Nicole. His name's actually Tom Nicole, so apologies to uh, Tom Nicole. We may have to just correct that later on. So, Tom Nicole, then, with 
the burst up through the middle. Yep, Alou to the tap tackle there, Alou to the second tackle, that's great strength because there was nothing particularly wrong with the tackle there, but to have the confidence to do that in a major final, that you can only really get by having years and years of practice of that. Yeah, that's not something you can do just for the first time in a major final like that. And it was Richard Emi, the man who crossed over, benefiting from Nicole's piece of skill. So half time here then in the cup final between Cranley School and Harrow School. Cranley turning round with a 12 points to five advantage. Harrow drawing first blood with a great breakaway score. And then Cranley working their way back into it. Seven minutes left to play. Seven minutes left of this entire tournament. What a fantastic tournament it's been as well, Jack. To, to, to see the skill level on show today and to see the enthusiasm of the players and the, the way everybody reacts as well, it's just what a fantastic advert for the game of rugby this is. Indeed, we've had numerous um, professional sevens players, former players, current players coming in to the co-commentary with us uh, today and just stressing how this is the start of, and you may be going to Rio this summer, you may be playing on the HSBC World Series, but this is where so many players start in Roslyn Park. And, Cranley, good start for them to the second half. Securing possession. The captain there just firing a loose pass, but he gets it into the hands of Nicole, and that's always a good thing. Nicole coming up the middle, and now back to Saki. Looking for space. Is Saki. Harrow gets to grips with him. Penalty Cranley. Nicole takes a quick one. Harrow flat footed on the right hand side. Over to Amari. Harrow do really well to haul him down. Danger not averted though. Cranley sends the try line. Tom Nicole again. On to Saki. And it will be the third score for Cranley. Patient work. Harris simply ran out of numbers. Yeah, that's a brilliant score there from Cranley because you'll see again on the replay here, they've just sucked the defence in. You know, Alex, Alex Good is the, the man who's strolled over in the end there. Cool, I beg your pardon. Alex Gould, the man who strolled over in the end there in the corner. But um, it was a real team try that because they just worked that so patiently. They've drawn the men in on the try line there on one side of the field. They know the overlap's coming, and this time, no panic as they put it through the hands. There was a two-man overlap there, and Gould just strides over in the corner. So Masters can't add the extras. Confusing him there with Alex Good for a minute, the, uh, the well, Saracens fullback. Well, actually, another further confusion. It's my handwriting, really. It's Alex Gook. Gook, beg your pardon. So I'm not doing anything for the uh, English department there at Cranley, but um, I can write back that normally. I've just been a bit rushed. The school's, the sports department's not bad, though, is it? it? Certainly is. Cranley now with a 17 points to five advantage, and on a cold day in sevens, if you just keep the ball, you can just frustrate your opponents, and they start thinking of other things. But Harrow. Mine's firmly focused on the task in hand, and that's getting back in this game. Fantastic run, number seven, placing a hand off, and four Cranley people might be chasing him back, but they can't do anything about that try. Callum Serka, his second of the final. Uh, well, he's proving to be their best player in this final, but it was set up by a lovely piece of skill deep inside their own half by Al Glickstein, because he got a, a ball away on the deck there that um, could have been easily a turnover there for Cranley, who would have been away possibly for a, a game clinching score there. But great presence of mind from Glickstein to get the ball away, and Circa does what Circa does best. Indeed, and for Harrow, unfortunately, that kick hasn't gone over. Shading to the left hand of the post, so 17 10. Harrow have reduced the deficit there within a score of drawing this game, not of winning it, I must mention. A draw, as it's a final, always important to mention extra time, and were it to be a draw, the match would be played on in periods of five minutes with golden point 
So not golden try. You can kick it over the post where you to get a penalty in front. And you mentioned this in the first half there, Jack. A mistake from the restart. Didn't go to 10 again. Last time it was Cranny. This time Harrow's turn to be at fault from that. Cranny looking to capitalise. Run up the middle and hands offload as well. Cranley fourth try. And you sense that the Cranley players on the pitch sense that might be the one that gets their hands on the trophy. And we've stressed the importance in the commentary of getting the restarts right there, and it's come from a Harrow restart that doesn't go the 10 metres because Cranley have taken full advantage. Superb work again to get themselves inside that 22. And when it does go wide, they've just got so much pace there, and um, they just haven't been able to contain the pace out wide today, Harrow, when Cranley have got the ball wide there. And, and as you say, that could be the game clinching score, you suspect. Missed conversion, so... Taking the scores then to 23 points to 10 in Cranley's favour. Yeah, it was just a um, nice little bit of the man who made the burst up the middle, clearly a bit of a forward. I thought, enough of this going wide. I've seen a gap up the middle. We're seen... strong enough to make it through, and then, and then the great offload, and then the pace. We've seen that a few times in the latter part of this tournament and in the other tournaments that we've seen here today, where the break up the middle really does pay dividends. Tom Nicole making sure that he doesn't make that mistake of the ball not going 10. Harrow changing direction. This good bit of quick thinking from the man in the yellow scrum hat. Hand off on Saki, number 10 for Harrow. Will Glover, their captain, back inside to Glixton. Harrow right back in it. Didn't go onto the post though, so. Cranley will be pleased for that, but credit the breakaway score. Yeah, and again, some fantastic individual skills there on show from Harrow because the try started from a, a wonderful piece of offloading by Ruben Bird Tuggock, the number five there, and the conversion is good, so game on once again here. But um, yeah, lovely individual skills there from Bird Tuggock to actually get them going from deep inside their own half. And the pace on the outside, Glickstein set up their first try, albeit indirectly, and uh, deservedly got himself on the score sheet there. sense it might be their moment. <laughs> Referee signals the try. Breakaway, sp dr breakaway sp score caught everyone by surprise. Indeed so. Again, restarts are proving really key here, but great leg drive there to get through the initial break, and it came at a bit of a price there, you suspect, for the for the Cranky player, because um, I think Alex Gook has um, injured himself in the process. He may have just tugged the, the back of the thigh there as he ran through for that score. Second try of the afternoon for Alex Gook, that one much more of a difficult run in. It may have come at a personal cost there, but as you say, that might just have clinched it for them. Yeah, I think the oxygen tanks just ran out a bit there for Alex Gook. Muscles seized up. Cranley not successful with their conversion there. So Cranley, buoyed by that last score from Alex Gook. It's been a super player for them today. And a brilliant kickoff as well. Harrow, though, win it back and change direction quickly again. They've been great at catching their opponents, napping this tournament with a quick change of direction. Here comes their number 10 as well, Will Glover. Set up that last try. Harrow so determined. Cranley throwing the kitchen sink and everything else they've got. Ben Saki on the floor, turning the ball over. The captain picks his moment so well. well that was terrific. Harrow isolated. Cranley kick it off, and they do win. The 2016 Roslyn Park HSBC National School Sevens Cup. Fantastic 
score fantastic scores throughout the game. Fantastic game played by Cranley. How bitterly disappointing at Cranley. Take the big one. Thumbly deserved winners as well there, Jack. They, they took their opportunities when they came. Magic Scoop with two tries in the second half. And what a great exhibition of rucking there at the very end as well from their captain. Very much a textbook approach to the breakdown, stopping Harrow at source and very much deserved winners of this tournament. Cup finals, as we know from watching so many of them in the rugby world recently, defined by moments like that, like Alex Cook's try at the end, like Ben Saki's turnover ball and like Tom Nicole's moments of skill. Full-time result then, we'll be taking you through the presentations of the cup later, but to confirm that score, Cranley 28, Harrow 17.